it hath made thee Earl of Gloucester. Seek out where thy father is. If I find him comforting the king, it will stuff his suspicions more fully. Here is better than the open air. Take it thankfully, I will piece out the comfort with what addition I can. I will not be long from you. The gods reward your kindness. How do you, sir? Stand you not so amazed. Will you lie down and rest upon the cushions? I'll see that trial first. Bring in the evidence. You, wrong man of justice, take your place. <laughs> You, his young fellow of equity, bent by his side. You are of the commission, sit you too. <clears throat> Arraign her first. Tis Goneril. I here take my oath before this assembly. Kicks the poor king, her father. Come hither, mistress. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it. Oh, cry you mercy, I took you for a joint stool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's another whose warped looks proclaim what store her heart is made on. Ah, ah, stop you there. Arms, arms, sword, fire. Ah, corruption in the place. False justice, sir. Why, how less lest there escape? Bless thy five wits. Where is the patience now, O oh, pity, sir, that thou so oft have boasted to retain? His tears begin to take my part so much they'll mar my counterfeiting. <laughs> Let them anatomize, Regan. See what breathes about her heart. Is there some cause in nature that makes these hard hearts? You! I entertain for one of my hundred. Only I do not like your garments. <laughs> you will say they are Persian. Now, good my lord, come lie down and rest a while. Now make no noise, make no noise. Draw the curtains. So? <laughs> so? So, we'll go to supper in the morning. And I'll go to bed at noon. Ready, good friend, take him in thy arms. I have or heard a plot of death upon him. There's a litter ready, lay in it and drive towards Grover, friend, where thou wilt meet both welcome and protection. Oppressed nature sleeps. Come, help to bear thy master. Thou must not stay behind. Come, come, awake. your husband. Show him this letter. The army of France is landed. Seek the traitor Gloucester. Hang him instantly. Pluck out his eyes. Leave him to my displeasure. Edmund, keep you our sister company. 
The revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not fit for your beholding. How now? Where is the king? My lord of Gloucester hath conveyed him hence. Some five or six and thirty of his knights met him at gate and are gone with him towards Dover, where they boast to have well-armed friends. Get horses for your mistress! Farewell, sweet lord and sister. Seek the traitor Gloucester. Pinion him like a thief. Bring him here before us. Though well, we may not pass upon his life without the form of justice. Yet, our power shall do courtesy to our wrath, which men may blame, but not control. Who's there? The traitor? The ungrateful fox? Bind fast his corky arms. What mean your graces, good my friends? Consider you are my guests. Do me no foul play, friends. Bind him to this chair, I say, bind him. I, by the kind gods, is most ignobly done to pluck me by the beard. So white and such a traitor. Come, sir, what letters have you late from France? And what confederacy have you with the traitors, late footed in the kingdom? Into whose hands you have delivered the lunatic king? Speak. I have a letter guessingly set down, which came from one who's of a neutral heart and not from one opposed. Cunning. False. Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore to Dover? Was it not charged? Where for to Dover? Let him answer that. I am tied to the stake and must stand the course. Wherefore to Dover? Because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes, nor thy fierce sister in his anointed flesh stick boorish Bang. <laughs> See it, thou shalt never. Fellows, hold the chair. Upon these eyes of thine, I'll set my foot. He that would think to live till he be old, give me some help. Help! 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 Ah! My lord, I have served you ever since I was a child, but better service have I never done you than now to bid you hold my villain. Ah! Ah! Nay, then come on and take the chance of anger. Ah! 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 A 
I'll never care what wickedness I do if this man come to good. Go thou. I'll fetch soft wax and whites of eggs to apply to his bleeding face. Now heaven help him. can do me no good at all. Indeed, they may hurt. Alack, sir, you cannot see your way. I have no way, and therefore want no eyes. I stumbled when I saw. Oh, dear son Edgar, might I but live to see thee in my touch, I'd say I had eyes again. How now? Who's there? Oh, God, who is it that can say I'm not the worst? I am worse now than ever I was. Tis poor mad Tom. Is it a beggar man? Madman, and beggar too. He has some reason, else he could not beg. In the last night's storm, I such a fellow saw, which made me think a man is a worm. My son came then into my mind, but my mind was then scarce friends with him. I have heard more since. Ah, as flies are we to wanton boys, uh, we to the gods, they, they kill us for their sport. Bless thee, master. Is that the naked fellow? Aye, my lord. Oh. And pray thee, get thee away, if for my sake thou wilt o'ertake us hence, a mile or twain, or the way to Dover, do it for ancient love. And bring some covering for this naked soul, who I'll entreat to lead me. Alas, sir. He is mad. Tis the time's play when madmen lead the blind. I'll bring in the best power that I have, want what will. Sit up, naked fellow. What times of cold? I cannot go further. Come hither, fellow. Bless thy sweet eyes, they bleed. Dost thou know Dover? I was. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. Bring me but to the very brim of it, and I'll repair the misery that thou dost bear with something rich about me. From that place I shall no leading need. Give me thy arm. Poor Tom shall leave thee. Master. Madam within, but never man so changed. 
I told him of the army that was landed. He smiled at it. I told him you were coming. His answer was the worse of Gloucester's treachery and of the, the loyal service of his son. When I informed him, then he called me stumped and told me I had turned the wrong side out. What most he should dislike seems pleasant to him. What light offensive. Then shall you go no further. It is the cowish terror of his spirit that dares not undertake. He'll not feel wrongs which tie him to an answer. Back, Edmund, to my brother. Hasten his musters and conduct his powers. This trusty servant shall pass between us. Ere long, you are like to hear, if you dare venture in your own behalf, a mistress's command. Wear this. Spare speech. Decline your head. This kiss, if it durst speak, would stretch thy spirits up into the air. Conceive and fare thee well. Yours in the ranks of death. My most dear Gloucester, to thee a woman's services are due. Fool serves my bed. Adam, here comes my lord. I have been worth the whistle. Oh, Goneril, you are not worth the dust which the rude wind blows in your face. No more. The text is foolish. Wisdom and goodness to the vile seem vile. Fruits save for themselves. What have you done? Time is not goddess. What have you performed? A oh, father. A gracious aged man whose reverence even the head loved bear would make. Most barbarous, most degenerate! Have you married? <laughs> Milk livered man that bearest a cheek for blows, a head for wrongs. Where's thy drum? France spreads his banners in our noiseless land, whilst thou, a moral fool, cries, Alack, why does he so? <laughs> Words in my fitness to let these hands obey my blood, they are apt enough to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bones. However, I want to feed a woman's shape doth shield thee. Marry your manhood. Mew. What news? Well, my good lord, the Duke of Cornwall is dead. Slain by his servant, going to put out the other eye of Gloucester. Gloucester's eyes. A servant that he bred, thrilled with remorse, opposed against the act, bending his sword to his great master, who thereat enraged, flew on him, and amongst them felled him dead, but not without that harmful stroke which sense hath plucked him after. This shows you are above. You just asserts that these are not the crimes so speedily convent. But oh, poor Gloucester lost he his other eye. Both. Both. This letter, madam, craves a speedy answer. It is from your sister. One way I like this well. But being widow, and my Gloucester with her, may all the building in my fancy pluck upon my hateful life. Where was the son when they did take his eyes? Twas he informed against him and quit the house on purpose that their punishment might have the freer course. Well, Gloucester, I live to thank thee for the love thou didst show the king, and to revenge thy eyes. Come here, the friend. Tell me more what thou knowest. What are the brother's powers set forth? Aye, madam. Himself in person there. Madam, with much ado, your sister's the better soldier. Lord Edmund spake not with your lord at home. No, madam. What might import? my sister's letter to him. I know not, lady. Why should she write to Edmund? Might you not transport her purposes by word? I love thee much. Let me unseal the letter. Madam, I had rather... I know your lady does not love her husband. I am sure of that. And at her late being here, gave strange your yeas in most speaking looks to noble Edmund. You are of her bosom. Aye, madam. I speak in understanding. You are. I know it. 
Therefore, I do advise you take this note. My lord is dead. Edmund and I have talked. More convenient is he for my hand than for your lady's. If you do chance to hear of that blind traitor, preferment falls on him that cuts him off. Would I could meet him, madam, I should show what party I do follow. of that same hill. Oh, Majesty, he did climb up it now. Look how he labor. <laughs> Methinks the ground is even. No, no, it's horrible <laughs> steep. <laughs> Hark, do you hear the sea? No, truly. Oh, why then, your other sex is growing perfect by your eyes anguish. So it may be. Methinks thy voice is altered. And thou speakest now in better phrase and matter than thou didst. Yeah. Uh, you're much to see. Uh, in nothing have I changed but in my garments. Come on, sir. Here's the place. Stand still. How faithful and dizzy it is to cast one's eyes so low. Yeah, the crows and chose to wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles. And, uh, and the fishermen, the fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice. Oh, yeah, yon tall anchoring bark diminished to a cock. A cock, it's a buoy, almost too small for sight. Huh? Set me where you stand. Give me your hand. Oh, you are now within a foot of the extreme verge. Let go my hand. Here, friend, this purse, in it's a jewel well worth a poor man's taking. Fairies and gods prosper it with thee. Go thou now further off. Bid me farewell, and let me hear thee going. Fairy well, good sir. Why I do trifle thus with his despair, it's done to cure it. Oh, ye mighty gods, this world I do renounce, and in your sights shake patiently my great affliction off. If Edgar live, oh, bless him. Treasury of life may be robbed by conceit when he yields to the theft. Had he been where he thought, by this that thought been passed. A life for a dead! Hold you, sir! Friend, friend, hear you, sir! Speak! Away and let me die. <laughs> you know, hast thou been aught but feathers, gossamer, air, so many fathom down precipitating, thou shiver like an egg, but thou dost breathe. Has heavy substance. Look up, speak, art sound, and life's a miracle, speak yet again. But have I fallen, or no? Oh, I, I, from the dread summit of the chalky born, do but look up, I. The shrill gorge lark cannot be seen or heard. Do but look up. <laughs> Alas, I have no eyes. This misery to be deprived of benefit, to end itself by death. 
Give me your arm. Feel you, your legs. You stand. Aye, too well, too well. Now, this is above all strangeness. That thing upon the curtain of the cliff. What thing was that which parted from you? Poor unfortunate beggar. Oh, as me stood here below, I mean, I be thought that his eyes were two full moons. Yeah, <laughs> he had a thousand noses. His horns, and they melt and wave, like he rage. See, it was some fiend. Therefore, happy father, think thou that the clearest gods of whom make honors of men's impossibilities have preserved thee. I do remember now. Henceforth, I'll bear affliction till it do cry on itself, enough, enough, and die. That thing I, I, you, you speak of, oh, I took it for a man. Mm. Often would say, the fiend, the fiend, he led me to that place. Well, bear free and patient thoughts. But well, who comes here? <laughs> Touch me for coining. I am the king himself. Oh, thou same piercing saint. <sighs> Nature's above art in that respect. There's your press money. That fellow handles his bow like a crow keeper. Draw me a clothier's yard. <laughs> oh, look, 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 a mouse, a mouse. Peace, peace. This piece of toasted cheese will do it. There's my gauntlet. I'll prove it on a giant. Bring up the brown bills. Oh, well flow, my bird, in the clout, in the clout. <coughs> Give the word, sweet Marjoram. Pass. I know that voice. Oh, Goneril with a white beard. <laughs> They flattered me like a dog. Told me I had white hairs in my beard ere the black ones were there. The trick of that voice I do well remember is not the king. I, every inch a king. When I do stare, see how the subject quakes. I pardon that man's life. What was thy cause? <laughs> Adultery? Thou shalt not die. Die for adultery? No. The wren goes to it, and the small gilded fly that lecher in my sight. Let copulation thrive. <laughs> A Gloucester's bastard son was kinder to his father than were my two daughters got between the lawful sheets. Oh, behold yon simpering dame, whose face between her forks presages snow that minces virtue and doth shake the head to hear of pleasure's name. The fiction, nor the soiled horse, goes to it with a more riotous appetite. Below the waist they are centaurs. The women all above. Give me an ounce of civic to the apothecary to sweeten my imagination. Let me kiss thy hand. Or let me wipe it first, because it smells of mortality. <coughs> well, thou ruined piece of nature, dost thou know me? I remember thine eyes well enough. <laughs> dost thou squinny at me? No, no, blind Cupid, do thy worst, I'll not love. Read thou this challenge. Were all thy letters sons, I could not see. What? Art mad? A man can see how this world goes with no eyes. Look with thine ears. Hast thou seen a, a farmer's dog bark at a beggar? 
I think. And the creature run from the curve? Mm. There thou might behold the great image of authority, a dog's obeyed in office. <laughs> thou rascal beagle, hold thy bloody hand. Why dost thou lash that whore? Strip thine own back. Thou hotly lost a user in the kind for which thou whipst her. Through tattered clothes, small vices do appear. Robes and fur gowns hide all. Plate sin with gold, and the strong lance of justice heartless breaks. Arm it in rags, the pygmy straw doth pierce it. None doth offend, none. I say none! I'll get thee glass eyes, and like a scurvy politician, seem to see what thou dost not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, matter and impertency mix. There's reason in madness. If thou wilt weep my fortunes, take mine eyes. I know thee well enough. Thy name is Gloucester. Oh, you must be patient. We come crying hither. Thou knowest the first time we smell the air, we wall and cry. I will preach to thee. Mark. When we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. It's a good block. It were a delicate stratagem to shoe a troop of horse with felt. Uh, I'll put it in proof. When we have stolen upon these sign laws, then kill! 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 Lay hand on him, sir, what, what, your most dear what? daughter. A prisoner? I am a king, know you that? You are a royal one and we obey you. Let me have surgeons, I am cut to the brains. You shall have anything. Then there's life in it. Come, and you get it? You shall get it? By running this way. <laughs> o ye ever gentle gods, let not my worser spirit tempt me again to die before you please. Well, pray you, Father. Uh, good sir, what are you? Uh, a most poor man, maintained to fortune's woes, and who by the arts of known and feeling sorrow. I'm pregnant with good pity. Come, give me thy hand. I'll lead you to some fighting. A proclaiming prize, most happy, that Iris, head of thine, was first framed flesh to raise my fortunes. Thou old, unhappy tree. Huh? Briefly, thyself, remember. <coughs> the sword is out that must destroy it. Let thy friendly hand put strength enough to it. Get off of him! <coughs> Wherefore, bold peasant, darest thou support a published traitor? Hence, lest that the infection of his fortune take like hold on thee. Out, dunghill.
Slave, thou, thou hast slain me. Villain, take my, my purse. If, if ever thou wilt thrive, bury my, my body. You can give the letters which thou finds about my person to Edmund, Earl of Gloucester. Seek him out upon, upon the English party. Oh, untimely death. Death. I know thee well, a serviceable villain, as duteous to the vices of thy mistress as badness would desire. What is, is he dead? Sit you down, father, rest you. Let's see these pockets. <laughs> the letters contained therein may be any friends. <laughs> Let reciprocal vows be remembered. You have many opportunities to cut them off. If your will wants not, time and place will be fruitfully offered. There is nothing done if you return the conqueror, then am I the prisoner, and his bed my jail. From the loathed warmth whereof deliver me, and supply the place for your labor. Your wife, so I would say, affectionate servant, Goneril. Oh, undistinguished space of a woman's will, a plot upon her virtuous husband's life, in the exchange, my brother. Come, father, fought off me thinks I hear the beaten drum. Give me that hand. I'll bestow you with a friend. Acknowledged, madam, is o'erpaid. How does the king? Madam sleeps still. Kind gods, cure this great breach in his abused nature. So please, your majesty, that we may wake the king. He has slept long. Be governed by your knowledge. Is he awake? Ay, madam, in the heaviness of sleep we put fresh garments on him. Be by, good madam, when we do awake him. Kind and dear princess. How does my royal lord? Thou dost me wrong to take me out of the grave. Thou art a soul in bliss. But I am bound upon a wheel of fire that mine own tears do scald like molten lead. Sir, do you know me? Thou art a spirit, I know. When did you die? Still, still far wide. He scarce awake. Where have I been? Where am I? Fair daylight? I am mightily abused. I should even die with pity to see another thus. Look upon me, sir, and hold your hands in benediction o'er me. You must not kneel. Pray, do not mock me. I am a very foolish, fond old man. And to speak plainly, I fear I am not in my perfect mind. I feel I should know you, and know this man. But I am mainly ignorant what place this is. And all the skill I have remembers not these garments. Do not laugh at me, for as I am a man, I, I think this lady to be my child, Cordelia. Yes, so I am, I am. Oh, are your tears wet? Yes, Faith. I pray you weep not. If you have poison for me, I will drink it. I know you do not love me, for your sisters have as I do remember, done me wrong. You have some cause, they have not. No cause, no cause. Wilt please, your highness, walk? Bear with me, I prithee. 
forget and forgive. I am old and foolish. Then determine with the ancient of war on our proceedings. I shall attend you presently at your tent. A sister, you'll go with us? No. Tis most convenient. Pray you go with us. Oh, I know the riddle. I will go. Open this letter. Now, if you have victory, let the trumpet sound for him that brought it. Wretched though I may seem, I can provide a champion that can prove what is about there. If you miscarry, then your business of this world has so an end, and machination ceases. So fortune love you! But the state I read the letter, I was forbidden. When the time shall serve, let but the herald cry. I'll appear again. The enemies in view draw up your powers. This is the guess of their true strength and forces by diligent discovery. But your haste is now urged on. We will greet the time. To both these sisters have I sworn my love. Which of them shall I take? Exasperates, makes mad her sister Goneril, and hardly shall I carry out my side, her husband being alive. Let her who would be rid of him devise his speedy taking off. As for the mercy which he intends to Lear and to Cordelia, the battle done, and they within our power shall never see his pardon. Take the shadow of the street with your good host. Pray that the right may thrive. If ever I return to you again, I'll bring you some comfort. Men must endure their going hence. 
Even as they're going hither, rightness is all, huh? Come on. Some officers take them away. We are not the first who with best meaning have incurred the worst. <coughs> For thee, oppressed king, I am cast down. Myself could else outfrown false fortune's frown. Shall we not see these daughters and these sisters? No, no. Come, let's away to prison. We two alone will sing like birds in a cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. And we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh at gilded butterflies. And we'll hear poor rogues talk of court news. And we'll talk with them too. Who loses and who wins? Who's in and who's out? And we'll take upon ourselves the mystery of things as if we were God's spies. And we'll wear out in a walled prison pacts and sects of great ones that ebb and flow by the moon. Take them away! Upon such sacrifices, my Cordelia, the gods themselves throw incense. Oh, have I caught thee? He that parts us shall bring a brand from heaven and fire us hence like foxes. Come. Come hither, Captain Hark. Take thou this note. Go follow them to prison. Know thou this, that men are as the time is. To be tender-minded does not become a sword. Either say thou to do it, or thrive by other means. I'll do it, my lord. About it. And write, happy when thou hast done. Mark, I say instantly, and carry it so, as I have set it down. I cannot draw a cart, nor eat dried oats. If it be man's work, I'll do it. You have shown today your valued strength, and fortune has led you well. You have the captains who were the officers of this day struck. I do require to help you. Sir, I thought it fit to send the old and miserable king to some retention and appointed guard. With him I sent the queen, and they are ready tomorrow, or at further space, to appear where you shall hold your session. At this time, we sweat and bleed. The question of Cordelia and her father require a fitter place. Sir, by your patience, I hold you but a subject of this war, not as a brother. He led our powers, bore the commission of my place and person, the which immediacy may well stand up and call itself your brother. Not so hot. In his own grace he doth exalt himself more than in your addition. In the powers by me invested he compares the best. That were the most, if he should husband you. Jesters do oft prove prophets. Allah, Allah, that I that told you so looked but a squint. <laughs> Lady, I am not well, else I should answer from a full flowing stomach. General, I create thee here, my lord and master. Mean you to enjoy him? With the let alone lies not in your good will. Nor in thine, Lord. Half blooded fellow, yes. Let the drum strike and prove my title thine. Say it, and hear reason. Edmund, I arrest thee on capital treason, and in thine attempt this gilded serpent. 
For your claim, fair sister, I bought in the interest of my wife till she is subcontracted to this lord, and I, her husband, contradict your values. If you will marry, make your love to me. <laughs> my ladies have spoken. An interlude. Thou art armed, Gloucester. Let the trumpet sound, if not appear to prove upon thy head thy heinous, manifest, and many treasons. There is my place. Sick. Oh, sick. If not, I'll ne'er trust the poison. There's my exchange. What in the world he is that calls me traitor? Villain like he lies. Call by the trumpet. He that dares approach on him, on you, who not. I will maintain my truth and honor firmly. My sickness grows upon me. But she's not well. Compare to my tent. Herald, let the trumpet sound and read out this. <clears throat> if any man of quality or degree within the list of the army will maintain upon Edmund, supposed Earl of Gloucester, that he is a manifold traitor, let him appear by the third sound of the trumpet. He is bold in his defense. Again. Which is that adversary? What's he that speaks for Edmund, Earl of Gloucester? Himself. What sayest thou to him? Draw thy sword. Thou art a traitor, false to thy gods, thy brother, and thy father. Conspirant against this high, illustrious prince, and from the extremest upward of thy head, to the descent and dust below thy foot, a most toad-spotted traitor, say thou no. And this sword, this arm, and my best spirits are bent to prove upon thy heart where to I speak, thou liest. In wisdom, I should ask thy name. But since thy outside looks so fair and warlike, and that thy tongue, some say of breeding, breeds. What safe and nicely I might well delay by rule of knighthood. I disdain and spur. Back do I toss these treasons to thy head. Trumpet speak.
murder! By the law of war, thou wast not bound to answer an unknown opposite! Thou art not vanquished, but cousined and beguiled! Except to not take with this paper, I shall stop it! Hold, sir! Thou wast in any name read thine own evil! No! No tarry, lady, I perceive you know it! Say if I do! The laws are mine, not thine! Who can arraign me for it? Most monstrous, go after her! She's, she's desperate! Govern her! What do you charge me with? That have I done? And more, much more. The time will bring it out, it is past, and so am I. But what art thou that hast this fortune on me? If thou art noble, I do forgive thee. Let's exchange charity. I'm no less in blood than thou art, Edmund. My name is Edgar, and thy father's son. The wheel has come full circle. Let sorrow split my heart if ever I did hate thee or thy father. Worthy prince, I know it. Where have you hid yourself? How have you known the miseries of your father? By nursing them, my lord. This bloody proclamation to escape taught me to shift into a madman's rags. And met I, my father, with his bleeding rings, their precious stones new lost, became his guide. I led him. Yeah, I begged for him. I saved him from despair. And I never revealed myself unto him till some half hour passed. And I asked his blessing. From first to last told him my pilgrimage. But his flawed heart took two extremes of passion, joy and grief, burst smilingly. This speech of yours hath moved me and shall perchance do good. means that bloody knife? Oh, she's dead. Who dead? Speak, man! Your lady, sir, your lady, and her sister by her is poisoned. She hath confessed it. I was contracted to them both. <laughs> now all three marry in an instant. I have come to bid my king and master I good night. Is he not here? It's a great thing of us forgot. Speak, Edwin. Where's the king and where's Cordelia? I pant for life. Some good I mean to do, in spite of my own nature. Quickly, send to the castle, for my writ is on the life of Leah. To whom? And on Cordelia. To whom, my lord? Who hath the office? The captain. Haste thee for thy life. He hath commissioned from thy wife and me to hang Cordelia in the prison to lay the blame upon her own despair that she forgave herself. God's protector. Bear him hence a while. Must end the image of that horror. Fallen see. This this feather stirs. She lives. If it were so, it were a chance that does redeem all sorrows I have ever known. Oh my good master. A plague on you, murderous traitors all. I could have saved her. Cordelia? Cordelia? Stay a little. Huh? What's that thou sayest? Oh, her voice was ever soft, gentle and low, an excellent thing in woman. I killed the slave that was a hanging thee. 
It's true, my lords, he did. Who are you? Mine eyes are not of the best, I'll tell you straight that... Are you not Kent? The same. Your servant, Kent. That from the first of your difference and decay have followed your sad steps. Hmm. You're welcome, Kent. Nor no man else. All's cheerless, dark and deadly. Your eldest daughters have foredone themselves and desperately are dead. Huh? So I think... He knows not what he says. Edmund is dead, my lord. That's but a trifle here. And my poor fool is hanged. Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life? And thou, no breath at all, I'll come no more. Never. Never! Never. 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 <coughs> Pray you, undo that button. Thank you, sir. You see this? Look on her, look. Her lips, look there. Look there! My lord, he faints, he faints, my lord, my lord! Vex my... not his ghost. Let him pass. He hates him that upon the rack of this tough world would stretch him out longer. Our present business is general woe. Friends of my soul, you twain rule in this realm, and the gorge takes his tail. I have a journey, sir. Shortly to go. My master calls me. I must not say no. The weight of this sad time, we must obey. Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest have borne most. We that are young shall never see so much nor live so long. <laughs>